back. This time we have Italy on the left and Spain on the right. I am Gio Frino and I'm joined by... Pay from Germany. So, have you seen much of these two teams? I've had a little bit of a look. I saw a bit of the Spain game. I think they look quite impressive. I've not seen any Italy though. Have you seen any of the other two teams? Uh, I saw, saw the game Spain against Belgium. Very good game. Yeah, it was a very good game and I think Spain did really well. So I'm really excited for this game as well. Who do you think would have this? Is your money on Spain? Is your money on Italy? As I haven't seen much of Italy this weekend, I really don't know. But I know they're known for a strong team and especially known for having really strong chasers. Yeah, I'm a, a little bit biased. So nationally, I'm Italian, for Zazuri. But uh, some of my friends are playing on Spain. I will try not to be biased in the commentating, but players like Alberto Salvador Garcia, number 33, is one of the most dominant players on Spain. If Either he's ball handling or behind the hoops, that's what we have got to be watching out for. Because Spain love that little pass over the top and Alberto to dunk it in. Yeah, um, both teams have really strong chaser lineups. Um, I'm really looking forward to their beating game as well, because they both lost quite some good beaters last year, especially Spain. Mm. Yeah, I know Spain beaters-wise, they've got Mariana Palaquin, who plays for the Manchester Manticores uh, domestically, and they have Alex Schoeringer, um, who is a guest from America this year, playing in Spain. I'm not too sure what team he plays for, but he has played incredibly well this weekend, and so has Mariana. And them as a pair was a beautiful earlier. So I think if they can work together, help create no bludger situations on offense, and maintain control on defense, I think Spain might just edge it. Yeah, uh, they also did really well um, against Belgium with that. So they, even though they, Belgium did have Louis and all the other great beaters, but they still managed to reset as much as possible to play as safe as possible. They sometimes got as distracted by beta play, but they still got their quaffle focus, which is really important in that kind of game. I think that's the issue. Like sometimes beaters can be distracted by beta plays, and that's okay for the beaters. But I would like, as a chaser myself, beat a bit of beta support, even on defense, offense. When they just go off and they do their battles off the pitch, I'm like, guys, what are you doing? Yeah, and no, I mean that's the thing. As a as the attacking beater, you try to to provoke that to to get the other beaters into a beta battle to distract them so they can't get into defense. So. This time, this game, it will be really, yeah, it will be interesting which team manages to play as a team with Chasers and Peters as one team and don't get distracted too much by the individu individual players. Yeah, I think that team synergy is what is most important, especially at this high level Quidditch. We, it's no longer seen leagues. This is now a big game. I think both teams will want to win this. Both teams, like, I'm not too sure if they're middle contenders. I think they're a little bit just below the standard there. They're not in the upper echelon of Quidditch, but I think they could both be challenging for like the sixth spot, maybe fifth. There has been some upsets, so who knows? Maybe another upset is on the cards a bit later on. Also, Spain, in their, in their um, before the game, they said they wanted to play Italy. When they, uh, when they wrote information for us, they, they explicitly said they want to play Italy. They think it's always a great match. They played them again. I think Spain won one game and Italy maybe two or three we have to check that again but nevertheless they are both on the same level and I think it will be a really exciting game. I think when you play a team um, before you can kind of start to maybe suss them out get that kind of familiarity of how they play learn their style of play I think that is the edge. If you can learn from your mistakes from before, even if you lose, there's still something to be learned from victory. I, ideally, if you, oh, sorry, there's still something to be learned from losing. There's, there's, was it? There's a thousand lessons to be learned in defeat and maybe none in victory. Something along those lines, that's some sort of saying. I'm gonna coin that one now, but I think I'm excited for this game. It should be a really good game. I think so too. And I just got the information that Italy won against Spain at the World Cup Ooh. last year. So I think Spain is really keen on that win. But then home field advantage, that could be like that could have been a factor for Italy last year. The crowds I was so I was there last year in Florence. The crowds are really cheering on Italy. As we said um, earlier in our analysis, Italy held um, the UK to swim and the UK only beat them out just in that snitch catch. So I think the home field advantage really helped played up. At the moment, because we are in Germany, there is no home field advantage for either team. So they haven't got that edge. And I think Spain would be, the fire is in them to win after that loss last year. Yeah, we'll see. So probably Italy is the, well, 
contender for the win here. Favorites? Um, Probably, maybe, but we'll see because Spain looked really well this tournament so far. I think saying any of the teams are favorites is very tentative here. It's uh, I, mm, I wouldn't put my money on either team being the favorites. I think my money is on being a close game, potentially a swim game. Probably, yes. And if it's swim, the I think Spain might just have it. From what I've seen, uh, seeking uh, ability of Ali, number one. Phenomenal player, really good strength in the seeking game. Nice catches earlier against um, Poland yesterday. And I think they might just have that. And they do have a wild card seeking, this is for my personal knowledge. So they have Alberto Garcia, number 33, who I mentioned before. Really good seeker. They, he hasn't seeked today or yesterday, but maybe that's in their locker. Maybe am I revealing some secrets? Who knows? Well, now it's too late for the teams to know, so... Unless they're listening in the box. Maybe they're listening in going, oh, what do the, what do the commentators know? Maybe they have some sort of advantage. Would you be doing that if you were over there? Um... Probably not, because my internet is not strong enough to actually do that. But if I could, it would be wise, because I think with another perspective, you can never go wrong. And st things like, yes, because when you are in the sus box, they are in the sun, we're in the shade. So we've got a little bit of a cooler head. We are impartial. We're seeing all different perspectives. And maybe, you said, like a fresh set of eyes. Because when you are so close to the team, so close to the action, it's difficult to think outside the box. What, what would another team do? And we are providing two different perspectives from two different nations and what the UK would do and what the Germany would do. So, and they both play different games. So let's see if they are listening in. I probably wouldn't be listening in. I'd be too focused on the game. But uh, <laughs> Maybe some, someone at home sits there with their phone just and texting just them. texting them all the information. <laughs> Guys, they're playing this kind of defense. Break it like this. That'd be very interesting. I wonder if that happens. Guys, if you are helping them at home, do comment on the live stream. Let us know. What do, who do you think has this game? Are, is your money on Spain? Is your money on Italy? Is your money on neither team winning? Well, that will be hard. I, I don't think there's any thunderstorm coming up uh, today. <laughs> there is. I'm looking for clouds. At, oh, I see a cloud. That's the first cloud I've seen all weekend. And it is the thinnest cloud ever. <laughs> and it's a good couple of miles away. So I don't think we should have any thunderstorms. So I guess there's one team that has to win. But you know what we do have? Brooms up coming soon. Oh, there we are. I think both teams are pumped for this. You can see the electricities in the air. You could cut the tension with a knife. I think the players know that as well, and they can feel it. And it, now it's the time who gets, who can keep their head cool, who can keep their concentration high. I think these first few minutes of the game are quite important. If one team comes out quite dominant, the block's quite strong, the other team needs to react maybe with a timeout, try and cool it down, slow the momentum. But here we are, brooms up. Who, who's going to get in there first? Who's getting there first? Who's going to get to that quaffle first? Are they going to score off brooms up? I think they're going to try, but I oh. don't know if they that's can actually manage. From, that's a slip from, Ireland, from Italy. Ali driving through, no bludgers as this brooms up. Still with the ball number one, Ali. Through and that top That's boot. a goal, and there's a brooms down. So that's a brooms down. Let's see what that is for. But unfortunately, number 30 of, uh, of Italia, uh, Co oh, number 30, Cochino. Um, again, apologies if we are butchering the pronunciations here. Slipped and regrettably didn't make it to the quaffle first. Addy had a free run. But let's see what the referees are discussing. There we are. So, illegal contact wrap. Goal was good though, so no penalty time served. So, Spain, 1 0, 13 seconds. Moving I think. Number one, eight, yellow card, illegal contact, two handed wrap. Goal is good, no penalty box time served. Yes. There we are, just confirmation of that. Yellow card, two handed wrap. Um, I think it's still way too early to call Spain dominating there. One goal, 13 seconds in, but. Yeah, Let's it, see. 
also, if you if you have to start with one chaser down or even one player in general down, it it's it's hard. So maybe it's not too bad that even though he got a yellow card, he's still in the game. Mm. And that's the important part is having that foul committed before the goal compared to after the goal. Because if it was after the goal, the player would be off the pitch now and they'd be down a chaser for an entire minute. So the penalty time is negated by... Um, the opposing team scoring a goal and whenever the foul happens before the goal it's negated by the goal that happens usually like a second two after yeah. or two so they can stay on pitch even though they get a yellow card and there was a goal from Spain um, yes and a phenomenal reaction there and beautiful goal from number 30 um, Cucino I believe I've said it incorrectly again but you know what I'm trying my best number 30 for Italia with the nice goal on the hoops good reaction that is the best response from Spain uh, from Italy there Spain go one nil up it's a respond immediately that's the important part making sure you're tight, close in this game. I think this could be a high-scoring game. A minute in, two goals already. That's true. Even though both teams are actually known for their pretty good defense, they know how to... They have really good reflexes. They know how to to defend chaotic situations, which, is, which can be hard sometimes. That was a beautiful save from number 23, uh, Mace Maciera from Espanyol. Very nice shot block there, trying to deny the goal from number two, uh, Imena uh, of Italia. So that was a really nice, good defence there from Spain. I think more of those kind of defences where you can stop the goals going in uh, was, was going to save the game. But Alberto Garcia with the ball behind, passes back to Ali in the middle of the pitch, who doesn't quite collect it, but has the ball nice comfortably now. Oh, that was an unfortunate pass to someone who is already beat. That sometimes happens, but it's, ah, it's never nice if you know how you pass to someone who was beat. I think, uh, especially when you're being tackled, the kind of panic sets in. It's still early in the game. 1-1, one, one, like, I think now you've got to kind of calm it down. And when you're a bit more calmer, maybe those mistakes don't happen. But we'll see. But also it was really good from uh, Italy to put Spain onto so much pressure that they had to uh, do a panic pass. Yeah, unforced mistakes are quite crucial in Quidditch. Those are where you can get some good goals, some good turnovers. And being aware of things like where the quaffle is, where the, um, the unbeat players are, is essential. Spain looking for the shot while, uh, sorry, Italy looking for the shot while Spain are on the shot stopping defense. Players on hoops. Italy uses a lot of space behind the hoops, which Spain doesn't do that much. They usually put just one troll maybe behind the hoops and play around. But Italy plays, it looks like they play the box with two chases behind the hoops and two chases in front of the hoops, which creates a lot of space. So the back beat, uh, the Defensive beaters have to run a lot, which can help if your beaters are not as strong as the opposing beaters. And what's quite nice with that kind of um, offense is you can spread the play. And if you can make those passes, those big long passes, it really helps kind of slow the game down, draw out their beaters, draw out their chasers, and then create a massive gap right by that hoops in that keeper zone. But there we are, wild pass. Uh, Iman with the ball in the middle, nice catch, and on the hoops, what a beautiful goal from number 15 of Italy, who is uh, Bluttini. There was a really nice positioning there. Very good vision as well. Often, like, that pass right over the top of the hoop sometimes is intercepted, but was inch perfect. Picture perfect, potentially, as I say. But Spain with the quick attempt of the counter. And they've kind of slowed it down again, I think for the best. Italy have control, both beaters inside their keeper zone. You kind of need to draw them out. Maybe play that Italian box formation. Yeah, but with only one troll behind hoops. Oh, there's a second person coming, but the, that pass was too long. But managed to keep it in. That's, not, that's very good for number four of Spain, Raquel. Alberto with the ball behind the hoops, looking for that pass back to Raquel. Very nice reception. 
no one beater, but dunks over the Italian chaser on the hoops. Very good confidence, self-belief. That's what we want more of. Yeah, for one second I thought she would pass, but then she didn't. It was definitely the right decision to get there. You saw that moment of hesitation going, I should pass it. But that good self-confidence, the self-belief going, I can score. That's what we want more of play from everyone in Quidditch. Yeah, that's also, that's what a strong team is. Every player individually knowing how to do it, how to score the goal, how to drive through, how to pass. The thing is, is I always say you're only as strong as your weakest link. If your weakest link will happily do that, if anyone will do that, that's what you want. A nice little bit of interlink play from the Italian lineup there. And that's a nice easy goal. Spain a bit sloppy on the defense and Italy counter and capitalize on it. So Italy is ahead 10 points. That's one goal. I don't think Spain should be too worried. It's only five minutes into the game, six min almost six minutes into the game. Spain are playing a very good defense. And I think maybe the what they could work on is their offense. Yeah, the, the Italian offense seems a lot more disciplined, a lot more strategical input there. A lot of, they have formations, they play them, they vary them a bit, uh, while Spain goes a bit more with intuition, which can work really well, but for now, they have to step up. I think the thing is, is what the Italians are doing so well on is keeping both keeping control and keeping the quaffle outside of the keeper zone radius. But at the moment, there is no bludgers for it's Spain on the defense. But I believe that is Raquel Ra Ra slowing them down, which is a very good heads up play. Apologies, that is not Raquel Ra, that's Bianca. Raquel Ramos has subbed off. Apologies for that. Nice pass out. Nice fake, and the dunk is right there. What a beautiful goal from Alessandri, number 18 of Italy. There's also a thing, sometimes when there are three chairs uh, in front of the hoops and you think, what can one person do? But it's, if you're standing so close to the hoops, one dunk, one drive through, it's so easy to, to, to score with that beater set. And it's really hard. I don't, especially with Italians' physical chases, I don't know how effective this, uh, hoop defense is from Spain there. So I think we've seen a lot of hoop defense this tournament, especially in the last game. The Netherlands ran five players when they had control along the hoops. I think it's an interesting tactic, but what it is susceptible to is the drives when you can dunk over. But there we are, nice quick counter. The hoop should right be right through. And again, Alessandri powers that through the hoop. Good yeah. aggressive B to play there. And I think very good patience from the Italian defense. Um, to kind of capitalize on the sloppy offense um, of Spain. And I think Spain called their timeout, yeah. and I believe that's the right call. They are three points down at the moment, and they kind of need to maybe recap, regroup, and so on. What do you think? Yeah, I also think with, uh, what did we talk before? the Oh, we have a replay coming in. So that was the goal we talked about. You can see clearly how she hesitates to score, but then she does it. Self-confidence. Yeah, Every, it's really good. That's what I like with a lot of the teams this weekend, especially the, up, the upper teams, the top tier teams, that they train all their players equally to have that self-confidence to be ball handlers, to be receivers, to be drivers. And you can see that, in yes, there was a bit of hesitation, but then she went, no, there's no passing option that is better than myself driving over someone. Uh, it's interesting to see in the lower bracket teams or in generally teams that are not that kind of level who usually play with like one or two really good chases who who are the playmakers who do basically everything with the others just trying to um, free their way basically but it's I personally think it's a lot more dynamic and more interesting to have teams on that level using all of the players. Well, you've got four chase, or you've got four, three chases and a keeper, so four quaffle players who can all score. So why can't they? That, that's, I think if you're only using two, you are massively hindering yourself, putting yourself at a disadvantage. If there's two people can't play anymore because of cards, injuries, whatever, because they don't have time, what do you do? Well, I think if, if negating the cards, injuries and so on, if you are playing with four, four quaffle players on pitch, which they were, you need to have the ability for all four to score. If two aren't used to scoring because they're not used to being ball handlers, all they do is set picks and push them off. The moment the quaffle goes into their hands, they'll have that doubt. That self-doubt is so crucial. All it takes is half a second. 
If you have half a second of doubt, you could then lose the goal, get a turnover, and especially against this Italian team who have been so good on the quick counters, those turnovers have been beautiful. It's really important to not have that self-doubt. And that was... That just proved the point. Um, our number six here from Spain went for the drive, didn't make it, passed to the passing option, which was a good... Uh, oh, we got a bludger into the live stream. Um, she passed and there was a goal. That was a really nice play for Miguel, being the sporting player. A lot of the times you need to be aware of that. If someone is driving through, don't just assume they can get that. Be a supporting option, either try and set a pick for them or be an easy pass. That's what I like in the kind of games this weekend is a lot more, again, top tier teams are trying to utilize everyone equally. So now we have a broomstone because there was a beta play off pitch, which is illegal. And now the refs are discussing whether it was off, uh, whether it was in bounds or outside of the bound. Personally, I didn't actually see it. I, uh, I, there was a loose budget that went flying just by where we're standing, which is right in line with the Spanish keeper line. And I had to go and get the budget because it was going flying. But so apologies for leaving you on your own there. <laughs> That's fine. I think it was, I actually think it was outside of the boundary, but I actually didn't see how they got outside if there was one beater who, um, if, you, if one budget goes outside you and two people run for it, usually one person is allowed to go off pitch to get the ball, but both of them were off pitch, so I guess now is the question why they were both off pitch and um, what, what, what happened. Yeah. So yeah, I, th I think I didn't see it, I don't know if the viewers at home saw it, but the head ref will clarify for us. And let's see what they're calling. Oh, so it's no, no call, no harm, no foul, good discussion, but no call. I think that is the right decision at the end of the day. So the beater was actually off pitch uh, when he was beat, so he's not beat, but he can go in on his broom again. And there is no bludgers on the Spanish defense, but a very, very good interception. Let's see what happens. Uh, I don't know. Personally, from what I saw, but again, my angle is only one angle, I didn't think that went through. That was an incredible stop from Bianca Benez. Uh, I Brenes. didn't see her coming at all. I thought it was a safe goal, and then she just jumped right into uh, the throw. She jumped the route like a ninja. She Honestly, she just appeared out of nowhere. Thin air, poof, and just gone. But that was a phenomenal defense. Spain need a lot more of that. They are two down. The press is on for um, Italy. But a nice beat from number three, Hector. I need a good, strong defense against Iman. Got. Oh. oh! That was unfortunate for the Spanish chaser. Bianca again, who made the last play, but and she just tipped it twice, but unfortunately couldn't again, as she's a chaser, put her hand through the other side of the hoop to goaltend it. I think maybe the keeper may have. Uh, was expecting that to go in, should keep playing to the whistle. Maybe come in and try and help. Again, being the keeper, you can put your hand through the hoop. Also, for Hector, he I, he did the right move by uh, actually beating that one chaser, but for some, especially when they run with their back to you, maybe you should have just like tapped them so you have the bludger again, especially if there are other people who are closer to do quaffle, um, who could just pick them up and uh, score a goal like they just did. So it's, I mean, you have to throw, but maybe a bit softer so you can get the bludger back um, faster. Situational awareness is so important. But there we are. What a beautiful catch from Hector and Bian uh, not Bianca and 21, who is Aurora Sola with the steal. Very nice play, but Italy still have the ball right by the Spanish hoops. There is one bludger on defense with Hector, but there's only two Italian chasers. What can they do? Look, they're going back to the impatience. Let's see if they can set up that box offense or if that's their style. They appear to be trying to set picks with number 15, Brutini. So we have... Oh, oh no. Uh, so there's an intense beater game. Hector lost his bludger, so there's a no beater situation for Italy. What a beautiful back heel kick through the legs of the chaser from Alessandri. But what an incredible beat from the Spanish 29. That was Ali Preuss, who played for Catalonia last year and who joined the Spanish team this year, who just beat uh, 
the receiver from behind. She who couldn't see it, but it was a really it was really well played. That is incredible situational awareness to not only be aware of where the quaffle is, but where the receiving chaser is, get the bludger out and beat them before. Zero, keeper, yellow card, illegal contact, low contact, one minute in the penalty box or until blue scores. As I was saying, as I was rudely interrupted by the referee, no, I'm joking. The referee is the correct person to be talking there. Basically, what was quite nice there was the beat was made, the awareness was there, but unfortunately, because of the card, Italy get reset with the quaffle right by the hoops. Let's see if they can stop them. This would be quite impressive with three chasers between the hoops and the quaffle, but fakes a shot. But very good uh, defense there, trying to deny the goal from number 21 of Spain, Aurora Sola. But regrettably... The beater missed and uh, the shot was in, was it not? From my angle it was, but again, I, we, we, are su we are at a fairly poor angle to see those shots sometimes. It might go wide. It looks like it goes wide, but goes in from our angle sometimes, or vice versa. So, yellow card, but... As the goal was good, no penalty time served. So the Spanish team collects quite a few of yellow cards this game. What do you think why they get so many cards? So I know that Spain play a fairly physical game. Um, having seen the... Having seen the Malaga Vikings play at EQC Division 2, they like to play quite a physical game. Tackling, which is very important. You can't be scared of making tackles. But... I think that may be their hindrance. Red number three eight. Yellow card, illegal contact, illegal grab, one minute in the penalty box because goal released the previous player in the penalty box. There we are clarification there. So although typically the penalty time is served by the goal because they had a player already in the penalty box, that player is released and the offending player goes into the penalty box. So but. Spain is basically playing with one player down. Again. Again. But at least they have the quaffle. So maybe they can try and slow ball it, try and get control back, play really smart, very slow, long, big passing arcs, maybe set up that box that Italy are doing so nicely. But ideally, they don't want to concede another goal. They're four points down. It's almost 12 minutes. If they, can go, if they go five down, this is where it can kind of snowball out of their control. And again, I think Italy may just end up winning it because Spain doesn't seem to have an answer for this Italian offense. They have to... Uh, right in the moment, uh, right now, they are mostly um, playing panic passes, also, and it's oh, that was a goal. That see, the thing is, is they're down a player. They, I said maybe they want to slow ball it a little bit, and they just ignored me because they're not listening, which is okay. But for them, it worked. I also didn't expect expect it to be also that calm. But he tried, and he he got the goal. But at the same time, if he had missed, it would have. It would probably have been uh, a goal for, for Italy as um, the Spanish chasers were really... Uh, oh, and he missed. Uh, were really... Um, Far in forward. The, yeah. So what was, what was quite nice, what was quite nice about that goal is Alberto had the ball on the far side, uh, holding the quaffle, was tackled, managed to spin out a tackle, pass it off to Mace Maciera, um, the keeper number 23 for Spain who then shot through that top hoop, hit the rim, and bounces in. Sometimes they go wide, but that one went in, and that's the important bit. And what they managed to do is they rode, they rode that entire minute, so their player managed to come out of the sim bin without conceding a goal. And they got, back in, they got it back into range, overtime range now. We are still five minutes away from the snitch floor, but this is something to be thinking about. Also, right now, both of the Spanish beaters are beat, so even if it's goal, um, Italy can uh, run a counter-attack, and they're doing that right now. But the game stopped, Broomstown. So let's see what the call is. Um, it appeared that, to my vision, number 23, Mace Marciera, was a beat before. And I think that was a fair call. But let's see what the refs kind of discuss about it. Let's see if it's no call. I think, I think number four of Italy, who is uh, Nicolini, would be a little bit upset if it's a no call, considering uh, he's right through, no bludgers. Two chase the beat, and but he had the momentum to run through them. Sometimes, whenever there's an advantage team for for one team, it is not always a proper advantage because you can't just 
stop a run and then expect them to be on the same tempo again when mm. they start. So, especially when you lose, him, the, when you lose that momentum, that can be a big killer. So now the momentum is lost. Let's see what happens. Looks to be gaining momentum again, but Alberto is there to slow down the drive. Number 33 of Spain. Let's see what he does. Tries to go outside, spins inside, really nice. Powers through, makes Masiella the keeper and scores. That was a very nice goal from number four of Italy, Nicolini. So Italy is out of swim range again. With four and a half minutes before switch on pitch. So realistically, Spain could slow ball for four and a half minutes. I'd be impressed if they do. Get that goal. Ali comes on and catches it. Goes to overtime. I'm calling it now. Well, we'll see. <laughs> Especially with Italy in bludger control. But maybe Spain got it back? No, they didn't. Oh, and that was unlucky. That shot tipped, went very near the middle hoop. But unfortunately, Bianca, uh, Aurora Sola, number 21 of Spain, was not able to collect it. Nice step there from number two, who is uh, Imer. How do you think uh, Spain manages with, without bludger control for such a long time? I think maybe this uh, aggressive chasing, like physical chasing, that's what is very important. Look at that. Nice takedown and incredible steal. But there is one bludger and it's passed off. Alberto, there's 2v1. Two chasers versus one beater. Passes off. Ah, oh, and it's a bit low for Aurora Sola. She managed to dodge the beat and gets it through the hoop. That was a really nice goal, but there's a broomstone, so there might be a foul. I thought that was a very nice interception. So that's a brilliant tackle from number... I'm going to say 38, 36, 38 of Spain, who is Shim, uh, Shim who plays for Marga Vikings, managed to get, make that tackle. So the pass was a poor pass. Arula Sola managed to intercept it, try, uh, pass it out to Alberto Garcia on the right. And then Alberto draws the beater out, passes back to Arula Sola, who started the attack, and pops it in for a nice goal after she dodges a brilliant beat. She dodged a, uh, a beat and she didn't, uh, as the pass was a bit... It was not a good pass. She, it was the good. It was a good idea, but she had to pick it up from the ground. Another person basically jumped at her, and she had to avoid them. And then she dodged a beat. So very impressive, impressive play. Yeah, very impressive play. Sometimes, like you see, the passes go a little bit low, and that happens, especially in the heat of the moment. No pass is always going to be perfect, but it's the adaption. It's that ability to scoop the ball from the floor, but keep a cool head, especially when a beater is coming towards you and a chaser as well. So the idea was uh, was really good. The execution was as well. As long as you have receivers who can react to that, as you said, uh, it's gonna be it's gonna be a goal. And they managed to do just that. I think the uh, the idea was good, but the uh, execution wunderbar. <laughs> as my as my bit of German for the day was it good? Es ist gut. I think the goal is good. At the least the ref didn't say it wasn't. Well, the goal gave it good. The refs gave it good. And let's see what happens. The pass over the top. But an incredible long-range beat on Nicolini of number four from number nine of Spain, who is Angel. I'm not going to show up, not too sure how to pronounce the surname. Apologies on that one. But that is a phenomenal beat from her. Now, Spain, three down. Almost three minutes of on pitch floor. They'll be very happy with this. Considering that mid-game, when it started to seem that it was going to get away from them, they managed to compose themselves. And I don't think they used a timeout, did they? Um, I don't think so. But it's... Oh, there was a nice goal. Where did that chaser come from? Again, I think, I think the Italian chase, uh, not Italian chase, the Spanish chasers are magicians. They appear out of nowhere, ninjas, like ninjas in the night. But it's about 2 p.m. in the afternoon and there's no, there's no cloud cover, so they can't really appear out of nowhere, but they somehow still do. That was a very nice goal from number one, the Spanish keeper, Ali, after the pass from, I believe it was, I'm not sure, I think they subbed off. Oh, it may have been Alberto Garcia. But I thought Alberto was marking on the far side. And that was a really nice um, block from or Oriana, I think. And, oh! And it, she got intercepted. And Bain managed to get the quaffle back in defense. That was a really nice uh, catch, though, from Palora. Paloro, sorry. Again, I'm probably pronouncing that wrong, but I do apologize. Number 16 of Italy there with the reception on your near side right hoop. 
I'm pretty sure she was captain of last year for Italy or maybe the she year before. You know, let's say yes, say it confidently, and then we will ADR this in later. And uh, yes, they, are def they were definitely captain. But here we are, Italy with the press. Rides that tackle nicely, oh, but unfortunately it's beat out. Let's see what happens. Good attempted at tackle, brings her down. Really nice tackle though. And still with the aggression from Bianca. That is what I like. Oh, but that got in. That is really, to, to sub someone who's that big without any beaters, it's really hard, even though there are cha four chases mm. in defense. Number 69, Setra of Italy there. Very physical, strong player. Managed to ride two tackle attempts and just power that through. I thought it was a very nice goal. But if that goal is good, I believe that takes to 9-6, which is still overtime range. So we have a replay coming in. But that, I think, just before the replay comes in, I thought that was a very good idea for a timeout. Both teams would appreciate that. It's less than a minute to snitch on pitch. But let's see our replay coming in now. There was a really nice play and really nice run from the chaser who just uh, stood basically in front of the hoops at the end. And he had a marker, but he was just that had faster so he could actually receive that quaffle and it was an easy goal then. Oh, that was a really nice pass, number 22 of Spain, Artur, who managed to ride the tackle quite comfortably as the second, tack as the second tackler tried to come in. Just kind of no look behind the back passes, casual, cool as you like, passes to Ali number one, the keeper, who pops it in for a nice goal. And that's the calm you need when you avoid a tackle, when you're being tackled. It's really hard to, to still see your receivers, know where all the other people from your team are. But he did that. He saw, uh, he saw someone coming up the hoops. He passed and it was a goal. I think that's, that's the difference between teams at this kind of level who are maybe like the slightly below the top tier teams and the bottom tier European teams. Having that composure when being tackled is so crucial. But Italy with the return goal, as we said, with 69 Centra, which means Spain have the quaffle with number one, Ali, on the right hand side, far side of your screen, attempting to get control back. Control is really important that far in the game, especially with overtime range. You want to have bludger control so you can uh, either go um, in swim range again. Well, it is swim range, but so you can actually win when catching the snitch, or you want to defend the snitch if you don't trust them to maybe hold um, the the other seeker off for that long. But our snitch today, Steve Besson, had a good, in my opinion, had a good weekend. Um, and personally, I think, should do fairly well. But it being swim game, let's see what can happen. I think all it takes is one person to be distracted. Okay, and there we are. Italy with a very tall player. Number one, uh, Dele Grazzi, um, seeking. Beat out, though, by Hector number three. So apparently Spain tries to stay with the bludger in quaffle game what but whenever there's time they beat out the seeker which so, i think is a, is a smart move this is interesting alberto with the catch from ali behind the hoops and dunks it in the middle hoop that puts spain in win range two points down what a beautiful pass and goal that is exactly what spain needed arthur is now seeking uh, and seeing what he can do so all of the beaters are now in snitch game. And there is no bludgers anywhere. Let's see, Setra can do really well. But gets that goal, pushes it back out of, uh, at, out of win range. It's now in overtime range. Spain still going for the catch. So I think they fancy their chances in overtime. And bludger control is with Spain which means there's no bludgers on the defense for Italy. Uh, oh, that's a high tackle in my opinion, but the ref has called an advantage marker. I think so that that's appears to be a bit of an accident. Uh, Adi was kind of trying to sidestep, and I think Setra kind of puts his hand up and says, I understand. But let's see what the ref gives it as. Bruno. 
number 69. Yellow card, illegal contact, contact to the head, one minute in the penalty box or until red scores. So Spain now gets the quaffle back because they got uh, they got fouled. So that should be a clear shot to the goal. Well, oh, well they maybe do not. <laughs> They've got some players in the way. They've got one chaser. But they do have Alberto behind the hoops with Abby, who is a very good shooter. Maybe a little cheeky behind the back pass. What do you think? They do have two receivers who are around the hoop, so maybe it's wise to fake a shot and then pass. It does look like an Italian player wants to go and hit Addy so hard. You can see it. Oh, oh, slightly jumping, but let's see. I think Abby maybe should ride the tackle and pass it to Alberto, who is uh, trying to get the interception in, but Alberto fakes it and gets it in. There's so they're still in... Uh, they're now in win range, so it's 100 to 84 Italy, so Spain can try to catch the uh, snitch again. But is be the, seek the seeker for Spain is beat out by number seven, uh, Quint uh, Quinti of Italy. So now there's another goal for Italy, so they're in overtime range again. Yep, that is a nice goal from Concino of Italy, number 30. But Ali driving through. Against, with no support, and pops it in. So right now, with the beaters out of quaffle play, one attack after the other, it's one goal after the other, it's it's probably going to be overtime range, win range, overtime win range, um, the whole game. I think if Spain can get a stop like that, that's a very nice cheeky beat there, beautiful attempt. The thing is, is that turnover could help save the game, because if all they've got to do is get it into win range consistently by being 1-2-1-2 one, two, one, two down, like they are now, that could win the game for them if they get a good catch. So maybe that sneaky, maybe that sneaky beat just won Spain the game, but we don't know yet. But I think what they need to do is make sure that Dele Grazia doesn't catch. Number one, the seeker, very tall, but it's defensively seeking, which I think is quite a smart play. Pass it to the hoops. The person is wide open. And the player launched it through the hoops, but you know what? That's not the worst of things happened to Spain. They, they're not in a great rush to go forward, especially considering that uh, Italy have number 69, Setra, who is a very large player, who I don't think they could stop in terms of tackling. Maybe, maybe unless all four players tackle simultaneously and leave all the other three chasers open. Uh, but then he could pass to one of the receiving ah, options yeah. and that would be a goal as well. So I think there's just no option but... Uh, having a goal every attack for every team. As the Spanish team, they both manage to score goals every attack now that the beaters are on snitch. Well, except for the one that was t the turnover from that sneaky beat, which I think, again, as we said before, that is crucial for Spain as they are now in two down range as opposed to three down range, which could keep them in win range. I think it's also like props for Spain that they kept it up even though they were 40 down and they didn't have pleasure control. They kept on fighting, they did their sneaky beats, <laughs> they did their defenses and now they are still in win range. Especially considering in that mid game they didn't seem to have an answer to that Spanish box formation and that Spanish def uh, sorry, the Italian box formation on offense and the Italian defense with the two beaters in the middle. But they somehow managed to adapt. I don't think they did anything different. Maybe the Italian players changed. Well, I don't know. Maybe we have to see the live stream again <laughs> after the tournament and then... Or maybe we can ask the an, uh, analysts. Maybe they saw something they we didn't. They might see something that we didn't, exactly. And Spain with another goal, putting it back to 12-11 to Italy. The time is 21-27. Also, with all these beat battles going um, on around the snitch, it's really hard because... On one side, you want to, to you have to beat the seeker. Um, on the other side, if you don't beat the other beater, you might lose bludger control. So you can't uh, beat the seeker. So, so it's a really hard decision. And snitch on pitch is usually for the beaters the most interesting part of the game. So we just had a goal there for Italy taking it to 13-11. But in terms of the beater game for snitch on pitch, the most important bit if you have only one bludger, is either attempting to get control back, maybe using your seeker to run at the snitch, making them beat you, and then getting that clean-up play, 
But if you if this if their C car is one on one with the snitch, you have to try to make that beat on the C car. Even if you lose control and you get beat out, or even if you don't get beat out, you make that beat immune call. Also, losing their one bludger is better than losing the whole game. Exactly. I'd rather lose a bludger over and over again than the entire game every single time. But Spain get one back with a beautiful shot. Italy got the quaffle on the hoops of Spain and they managed to get it back in. I don't think the chasing game is going to change too much. I think it's going to go one down, two down, one down, two down. I also think that it's, it's impressive because their offenses are so much stronger now that the beaters uh, are missing. But also, I mean, they have quite physical players. Why can't they tackle uh, in defense? I mean, they can, but it's so hard. So in Quidditch, especially considering the rules around tackling with the one-arm contact zone from the front, above the uh, knees and below the shoulders, it does make tackling fairly difficult, especially for against larger players. And if they can build momentum, because you're standing on the halfway line when they can start running from the keeper line, that really does affect it. You don't have to be only, uh, you don't only have to be stronger, you only have to be uh, more agile and faster, so you can tackle them from the front, so it's really hard. Yeah, and, and as we said, the chasers are just trading goals, left, right and centre. This score is going to be run right the way up because neither team wants to kind of slow this down, which I think is the right thing to do, especially for Italy. They want to maybe try and get another goal, make a stop on defence. Oh, and we had a snitch catch. And the Italian seeker there coming in, number, I believe that is number one, although I can't see from the back or the shorts of the Italian, but I do not believe that is number one because that was Grazzi from earlier. He looks like taller. That is number six, who is uh, Gio, uh, Giolami. Well, so, let's see if that's good. Okay. Steve Bussona, snitch, has done a pretty good job, lasting a fair amount of time, would you say? Would you say that uh, Steve was a decent snitch? But let's see what our replay says in that catch. Oh. So with 25 minutes, so seven minutes in game with always at least one seeker who wants to catch. I think he did well. Mm, yeah, it was a swim game and it was even when it wasn't um, win swim, when it was overtime swim, it's still both teams are trying to catch, which was quite difficult. But let's see what the ref gives it. Catch called good. I thought that was a very good game. Italy were, I think, the most dominant team. But Spain should be very proud of themselves, managed to come back from that deficit and keep it close. And the game ended 170 start to 140, so they were tied on quaffle points. I didn't see that coming when they were 40 down, so kudos to coming back. Nor did I. So I think there is some positives for them to take away, but let's see what our analysts say. So I have been Gio Farino. And I was Pei Heiser. And thank you for joining us.